Right then, here we have a VTEC valve lifter. And as you can see inside, they're, uh, they're, they're different to the other ones as they have this little this little badger inside um, which needs to be removed like so and there we go as you can see it's just a, it looks like a conventional bucket now just um, once this has been removed point to note that little dowel there when reinstalled into the bucket goes down as you put it in make sure you get that the right way around um, okay now what we uh, what we need to do is we need to um, we need to fit one of these to this in order to hold it in the engaged position. Now I'll come on to that in a moment. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to talk about roughly how the uh, the VTEC system works on uh, on a bike because it's not the same as it's not the same as the Honda Civic, for example. Um, the cars have a completely different camshaft arrangement uh, with extra lobes and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, it works slightly differently. On here, you can see this this is sprung loaded and down the center as I push it you can see it closes up now that is held in the open position by a spring and it uses oil pressure to close that so to explain roughly how the VTEC works on this bike because it's not the same as um, the the Honda cars the Honda Civic for example has a completely different camshaft arrangement with extra lobes and that's um, that that works in a completely different way to to the way the bike VTEC works. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use, uh, I've got a pin punch here and I'm going to use this um, to demonstrate it. Imagine that this is the uh, the stem of a valve. Um, I'm going to do, pop it over. So obviously picture the fact that the lifter is on there um, but in normal operation below 6800 rpm the valve stays shut against spring pressure um, because there is a conventional spring um, with a spring cap holding the, the valve in the closed position and there is an additional spring outside of all this which the VTEC bucket acts upon to reset itself it's completely independent under normal uh, under normal operation and below 6800 rpm this lifter is merely sliding up and down the valve stem it has absolutely no interaction with the valve whatsoever now when you get to 6,800 RPM and you get that VTEC kick and you hear it, you actually hear it, um, that closes under pressure of oil. And as you can see, the valve stem will no longer go through the hole because obviously it's been closed off. So now what happens is this sits at the top of the valve and pushes the valve down. You keep you riding along on the VTEC perfectly fine. You come off the VTEC, you go back down through the uh, through the RPM range. The, the 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 plunger then resets itself, comes back out, and then is allowed to go back over the valve stem again, and the valve closes. And that is, in a nutshell, basically how it works. It's very very um, uh, you know a very uh, brief description of the, the the methodology behind the VTEC system on these bikes, but it's a simple system. It's not. You know, it's not um, it's not rocket science by any stretch of the imagination. It's that actually works quite well. Anyway, what we need to do in order to uh, take the valve clearances is we need to um, prep this before we can fit it re uh, back to the bike. Okay, here's a part number for these little uh, these little bad boys. Basically, what they are little nuggets of steel. They've been machined. Um, to fit into the oil slide and they act as a stopper basically to prevent it coming back out and they keep it in the closed position what I'm going to do for your benefit is I'm going to take my very near caliper and I'm going to measure it measure one of these 2.5 mil
by six mil and you'll be laughing. So you can make one of these um, tools out of a six mil drill bit, just cut um, four 2.5 mil sections out of, a, out of an old drill bit. Don't use a new one, just use an old drill bit. Uh, use the shank, obviously not the, uh, not the twist section. Um, but yeah, yeah, uh, four of them is all you need. This little packet came with eight. You don't need eight because you're only doing one bank of cylinders at a time. You, you, I'm currently working on the rear one. I haven't even looked at the front one yet. So by the time I get to the front one, all the rear ones will be done. So those four will then be taken out and I can use them again. So you don't actually need eight, you only need four. Um, so yeah, use, cut them out of a drill bit. There's no, no point in buying them and they're actually ridiculously expensive. And um, in the UK, they're actually quite hard to source. Anyway, moving on, what we need to do, we need to take our little stopper, just there, and what we're going to do is we're going to push it in there, and as you can see, we've closed it up, then take the whole assembly and push it back in, and as you can see, it's been retained in the closed position. Right then, what we need to do now is go and pop it in the bike. Okay, here's our VTEC valve with our stopper tool inserted. What we need to do now though, is obviously we need to remove this, this spring here. This is the VTEC spring. Obviously paying attention to its orientation is a progressive spring, but the tighter coils need to go downwards. And then fit the, um, fit the uh, lifter back in position. And as you can see now, it's sitting lower down uh, than it was previously because that's still got its um that's still got uh, the spring and everything still as as it came um out of the factory so i haven't done anything with that one yet but you can see now this one is sitting lower down uh, more like a conventional spring uh, like a conventional valve should i say which is basically what we've achieved here we, we're, we're treating it now like a conventional valve okay what i need to do next is exactly the same process for the other three um of the vtec valves that one that one and that one and then what we can do is pop the camshafts back in and get ready to uh, check the clearances. Right then, camshafts. We need to refit them. Obviously, this is the timing line, the reference line that we're looking at, and that needs to be level with the, the surface of the head. Um, what I need to do is I do need to recover the timing chain. So if I drop the shaft down there for a second, recover the chain over there then I need to basically I need to get the shaft in its position at the right orientation now it's easier said than done and I'm off there so what I need to do rotate it slightly and I think I'm off there as well actually And that looks good. So, if you look at the line, compared to the cylinder head, we're, we are aligned correctly and it all looks good. So what I need to do next is just grab the other one and do the same thing. Okay, the reference line we're looking at for this one is there, RE. And you can't get it wrong because as I said before, the two sets of lobes on cylinder three should be pointing upwards and slightly towards each other. Torch. Nah, way off. So I need to adjust this one. bit of trial and error but it'll go in eventually now 
still not that. And that looks pretty good now. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to show up on the camera or not, but the line is now aligned with the cylinder head directly opposite this one and we're looking good so what i'm going to do now is get the cam cap and refit it right then let's get the camshaft cap on um, we've got it um, we've got the timing correct as you can see the lobes on cylinder three are up and pointing towards each other you'll see that the back of the camshaft here is sitting a little bit proud as we put this on and bolt it down um, obviously in a crisscross pattern it will it will snug it down what i'm going to do is just pop it on these the inner ones are the longer bolts with washers on um what i'm going to do before we actually tighten it down though is i need to get these two caps on whilst there's still a bit of um movement in the camshafts if if you tighten this down then try and get them caps on you'll find it incredibly difficult so i'll go and grab them off the bench and we'll get them on okay as i said earlier we can't get these uh we can't get these wrong because they're they're marked ri for um rear bank inlet re for rear bank exhaust so let's pop these on you'll see underneath there's actually a slot that slot there is what this engages inside so that's the main reason why you don't want to be bolting this down till these are on because otherwise the camshaft will be solid and you, you won't have any lateral movement in order to get the caps on so there we go there's the caps on let me just get the bolt started and there we go right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to start to snug these down a little bit at a time seated and all I'm going to do is snug them up I'm not going to bother talking them for this stage because there's no point and then we can do these caps little bit at a time on each side just to make sure that they seat correctly and that the dowels are fully engaged and there we go right all I need to do now fit these four outer bolts and then we're uh, we're good to go And there we are, that is the camshafts fully reinstalled. The, uh, the chain feels tight here, however the tension still isn't on. All that tension there is held between the two camshafts. So what we need to do next is just release the tension on the, on the uh, cam chain tensioner because there will be uh, a need to rotate the camshafts um, as we go through the uh, gauging process. Right then, with the cam caps on, um, all the timing right, uh, timing right, and everything, all the alignment correct. What we need to do now, just as a confirmationary check, is I want to pull the stopper tool out so that it resets the chain, which it should have done. I didn't hear it pop. You normally hear it. Oh, there we go. It didn't pop. It didn't pop then, but it did. As I uh, as I just touched the as I just touched the chain with my fingers, I felt it reset itself. Um, so that's uh, that's all good. I'm just going to give it a quick check inside, and yeah, we're all we're all good. 
Right, what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the time in, I'm gonna turn the crank twice, watching the camshafts. When we get back to the 3T mark here, the camshafts should be in the same position and the, the time and alignment should be the same. Okay, so now, um, now cylinder, yep, cylinder three, three T's at the top and cylinder three is just going through the exhaust stroke. And cylinder three coming back to the compression, I can feel it. And there we go. And checking the timing line, just there, it's back where it should be. The cam lobes are pointing up and towards each other. Check that one. Yeah, that one's all good as well. Obviously, I can't show you that one on the camera because it's not going to show up, but take my word for it, it's in the right place. Okay, what we're ready to do now is actually get our feeler gauges out and carry out the actual check. Okay, we now have the camshaft aligned with the 3T mark and that has put cylinder three at TDC on the compression stroke. As you can see, the two lobes are pointing up and slightly towards each other. So we're now ready to carry out the clearance. So I've got my feeler gauges out. Now, um, all the valves on the inlet camshaft, their clearance is 0 0.20 of a millimeter. All the valves on the exhaust camshaft, 0.35 of a millimeter. And that applies to the rear bank and the front bank. There's no difference whatsoever. Inlet, 0 0.20, exhaust, 0.35. Now, the only difference to that is that the standard valves have a tolerance of 0 0.03 of a millimeter, and the VTEC valves have a tolerance of 0 0.08 of a millimeter. So there's a little bit more, bit, a slightly larger tolerance on the VTEC ones. Anyway, moving on, the actual uh, clearance itself is dead easy. I've got a 0.2 um, feeler gauge here, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go um, along the inlet camshaft. Obviously, I can only do these two at the minute because the um, uh, cylinder one isn't uh, set to TDC on the compression stroke. So I can only do these two. These two here on the inlet, and these two here on the exhaust. So 0.2 on these, 0.35 on these. The way I'm gonna do this is I'm basically going to use the gauge um, that I expect um, to find the clearance for so point two if this goes in and feels really really loose then what i'll do is i'll add a few more feel gauges uh, of varying thicknesses 0 0.005 or whatever just to just to bring the, the thickness up just to gauge where it actually sits um it's unlikely that we'll actually um find any that are actually open usually they as they wear the the gap tightens up as the as the valve wears into the uh, into the, the the valve seat it normally closes up the the, uh, the valve clearances so i would expect if um this doesn't go in it's because you, you know it's um, they're actually tight in which case i would then go down to probably 0.15 or 0 0.10 um, until we find the actual clearance once we found the actual clearance then we can make a note of it and we'll look at how to deal with that later on so i've got a 0 0.20 here and what i'm going to do is simply insert it into that valve uh, in between basically in between the the uh, the cam lobes and the um and the actual lifter itself as you can see and we should be able to see it poking out the other side just there yeah we can see it poking out the other side and i'm getting a ever such a slight drag which is exactly what i expect to feel yeah ever such a slight drag and a slight drag is what we're after. We're not after it pinching. We're not after it falling in and being able to move around. We, we should be able to feel a little bit of resistance against the, uh, against the feeler gauge. If you're getting a little bit of resistance, that basically means that that is the setting. Okay, moving on to the next one. What I expect to find on this one is the same, the same result. Um, obviously, I can't get into this side, so I'm just going in here and making sure the, the, val the, the, the gauge goes in. This is obviously one of the VTEC valves. And that point two, that point two isn't really going in. 
it's it's not really going in it feels really tight and I, I can't get it in so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna move down I'm gonna move down let's try Where are we? Let me find the next one down. Let's try a 0.15, shall we? We'll try a 0.15. No, again, that's that's not really going in there. So we've got one that's tightened up here, which is uh, quite interesting, especially as it's a VTEC one as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move down to a 0.10. Point one zero. Yeah, and that one's going in with a light drag. In fact, that feels really nice. That's exactly how I would expect it to feel. But obviously, this one should be point two zero. So this one's closed up. Now that's quite interesting, uh, especially as it's a VTEC valve. Got to remember. The VTEC valves are only actually in use, as I described um, earlier on. The VTEC valves are only actually in use um, when the bike's above 6,800 RPM. So they, they get used half the amount of time that the standard valves get used. However, that said, I do keep this bike in the VTEC range quite a lot. So it's, um, it, you know, it is what it is, I guess. Anyway, what I'm going to do, I'm going to now check the exhaust ones. They're 0.35. I'll, I'll whip through those. Then what I'll need to do is obviously rotate the crank to the one T position to bring cylinder one into um, TDC on the compression stroke. Again, that's when the, the two lobes are up and pointing towards each other. So what I'll do, I'll crack on, rotate the crank, do cylinder one, and then um, we'll, uh, we'll bring you back in. Okay, I've now... Um, Rotated it to cylinder one TDC on the compression stroke uh, and I've carried out the gauging and I found some uh, f fairly interesting things out. What I've discovered is that basically on these shafts, the uh, the exhaust VTEC on cylinder three is, um, is tight. I've also found that the two um, front VTEC on both cylinders, the inlet ones, are, uh, are tight and um, that's surprised me a little bit um, and I've also found that the standard inlet um, valve is also slightly tight so they're all going to require adjustment and unfortunately um, that comes at a cost because the, the, the VTEC buckets uh, require replacement in order to shim these it's not a case of um, just applying a shim like you do with a standard valve this standard one here it would be a case of just adding a, adding a, um, a slightly th uh, thinner shim um, but obviously the, the VTEC buckets will require a complete replacement and they're in the region of 28, 29 pounds each. So that's a bit of a shame, um, especially as there's three of them here. Um, right, what I need to do now is I need to pop all this apart again and recover my stopper tools. Um, once I've recovered my stopper tools, um, I can then uh, measure the um, thickness of the VTEC buckets and the shim in here. I can measure those and then I can use that measurement to make a calculation to ensure that I get the right sizes ordered from uh, from Honda. Once I've done all that, um, what I'll do, uh, we'll have a little discussion about it over on the, uh, over on the bench and the board and then um, um, I'll, I'll show you how, how I go about that and the little calculation that we need to use. What I'm also going to do um, is I'm going to now attack the front, um, the front bank of cylinders um, but the process for that is identical in every way to the rear bank. Um, the only difference is that the uh, the radiators will need to be moved out of the way because they'll they'll be in the way and stop me being able to see the uh, timing marks. Um, but that shouldn't be uh, that shouldn't be too challenging. Um, anyway, so what I'll do, I'll crack on with that. I don't want to double up the effort um, between the two banks of cylinders because the vid this video is going to be quite lengthy as it is. So I'll go ahead, do cylinder one. I'll get all the measurements for that i'll make a note of them and then uh, i'll bring you back in and we'll have a little discussion about uh, moving forward right for the front cylinder for, for 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 access what i've done is i've removed the bolt holding the radiator on and there's a bracket underneath here which also holds the oil cooler lines what i've done is i've removed the bolt um for that and then removed the bracket completely and then that allows the radiator to swing down as you can see here now 
I've done the same on the other side and I've actually managed to get quite a bit of um, quite a bit of clearance here um, and as you can see I can see the top of the cam cover quite easily and I'll be able to see timing marks um, here quite quite easily um, without any uh, any problem whatsoever also I've removed the horn the horn bolts up just inside the headstock up here um, from under there the horns there the uh, wiring for the horn is there I've just disconnected it and thrown the thrown the horn on the bench and disconnected and removed the um, both the uh, the coil sticks so we're now in a position to actually remove this cam cover again as before it's just the four bolts holding it on and then uh, obviously just breaking the seal on the gasket and then we can take it off then it's a case of repeating 100 percent what we've done at the back the only difference being is that we're using the 2t mark and the 4t mark uh, for cylinder 2 and cylinder 4 respectively other than that the process for the for the front bank of cylinders is identical in every way to the rear one so what i'm going to do is um th this is going to be a fairly lengthy video as it is and i don't want to double it up unnecessarily so obviously take it from me that the front bank is carried out in exactly the same way as the rear obviously the the tensioner to take the tension off the chain for the front bank is just down here to the side of the throttle body right there i'm pointing at it right now um that is the bolt that you need to remove in order to get the, uh, the little stopper tool into um, and that will take the tension off the chain. Anyway, as I said, I'm going to crack on with it, get it all sorted and check the clearances and then at the end, once I've got clearances for all 16 valves, um, we'll have a little discussion about my discoveries and what I need to do next. Okay, I've got the front cam cover off and there is a point I need to, uh, I just need to clarify for, for the sake of anyone else who is going to do this job and may be a little bit concerned um, that it isn't quite the same as the rear. Uh, it's very, very minor, but it's not, uh, it's worth pointing out. Now I've got the, um, I've got the timing mark for the 4T, as you can see, um, lined up with the mark. And if we look at both the camshafts, you can see the timing mark there with the FE, which is obviously front exhaust. And this one, here, FI, front inlet, you can see that the lines are aligned with the cylinder head and that they are pointing away from each other in exactly the same way. That's no different whatsoever. The one thing I do want to stress that is different is the position of the cam lobes on the camshafts. On the rear, when the cylinder was on the compression stroke, the, um, the, uh, the cam lobes were pointing upwards and towards each other on the front camshafts they point upwards but away from each other so the valves are closed obviously because the lobes aren't pointing downwards but it's worth it was worth pointing out just in case anybody else came across it took the cam cover off and thought oh no they're not pointing towards each other i must have it wrong you haven't that, that's the way they are supposed to be okay so i'm going to crack on get all of this done and then i'll bring you back in a little bit okay all four cylinders have now been uh, have now been checked and we've found a few uh, valves that are actually lacking which is a surprise based on um, the common conception that these never need checking uh, as you can see I've got uh, a few that are out of spec so let's go through um, as I said before uh, both the standard and VTEC exhaust um, valves are 0.35 uh, and I found a few that were in spec so one two no um, 0 0.30 this is an interesting one <clears throat> and it gives me a little bit of chance to uh, explain the tolerance um, that we uh, that we have here um, as this is a VTEC valve I have a tolerance of 0 0.08 now that means that the, the 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 clearance can be as small as um, 0.27 or as large as 0.43 um, so that, that's quite a wide range um, and obviously 0 0.30 falls well within the tolerance um, that, the, uh, that the manual specified. So that one, we're good. Uh, continue with the front bank then. Inlet, um, both standard and exhaust, 0 0.20. Um, as you can see, that one's fine. Um, that one again is fine, even though it's a VTEC, it doesn't matter. Um, this one was 0.15. Again, taking the tolerance into account for a VTEC valve, 0.15 is still within tolerance, so we're happy. 
This one is 0.15. Now this is a standard valve, it's not a VTEC and it still should be 0 0.20. However, the tolerance for this is 0 0.03. So it could only be as small as 0.17, not 0.15. So we need to shim that one to bring that one up. Moving to cylinder one then, this is a standard valve and yet again, we've got 0.15 on that one, so that one's no good. This is a VTEC valve. Now, this is half, the clearance is half what it should be. And the same for this VTEC valve as well. So again, we need to replace both of those shims. This one here, fine. VTEC exhaust, fine, fine, fine. And this VTEC, not fine. So, to go through, not good, not good. Not good, not good, not good, not good. So we've got one, two, three VTEC valves that are out of um, that are out of kilter, and one, two, three standard valves that are out of kilter. Now, what I've done, um, I've gone round and measured uh, the shims and the lifters out of um, each of the ones that are problematic, and all you need to do for that is. Grab a, micrometer, uh, a micrometer, take your shim. This shim here is out of this valve. You can see on it, it actually says 1.85. I don't know if that's gonna show up on the camera or not. It does actually have 1.85 laser etched onto the face of the shim. I'm not sure whether that'll show up on the camera. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the micrometer just for clarity and I'm going to, tiny little buggers, get in there, close it up in the micrometer. Okay, so that is two millimeters. And as you can see, we can still close it up further still until the ratchet, and you can see we've actually closed it 0.15, which means that that is, as suggested there, 1.85. And I've written that in red above everything that it needed, that it you know, needs adjustment. Um, so that's the shim. To check the um, VTEC buckets, again, the number is actually laser etched on the inside, but I, I know for a f I, it's very hard for me to see. Uh, I do wear glasses. Um, normally and it is hard for me to see and i can guarantee that the camera is not going to pick that up but i've taken a VTEC bucket out of this one and as you can see i've written 2.9 but just for uh, just for the sake of clarification it's a case of simply fitting a micrometer over the top of the bucket and closing it up centrally And there's three millimeters and there we are there's the ratchet closed and we've come back another 0.1 of a millimeter so that is as you can see 2.90 now in order to bring these back in what we need to do is a little calculation so that is what I'm going to move on to next Right, um, as you can see, there's a few green numbers in each of these valves, and that's the calculations that I've worked out already. So I've already done this, but what I'm gonna do is for the, for the sake of you guys um, that may not be um, sure how to do this, I'm just gonna run through it. It's really, really simple, and it's this calculation here. Uh, a is the new lifter or shim. B is the recorded figure, so the number that I've got in red here inside. C is the spec, so whatever these are and D is the thickness of the old shim or bucket. So let's uh, look at th this VTEC valve here, for example. So the recorded spec was 0 0.10 minus the spec for a VTEC uh, inlet, which is 0 0.20, which will equal minus 0 0.10 minus 0 0.10 is then added to whatever the old thickness was. 
and the old thickness was 2.9. Minus 0 0.10 added to 0 0.290 equals 2.80. Hopefully you can uh, follow what I've done there. It's really, really simple. It's not, um, it's not rocket science maths by any, uh, any stretch of the imagination. And you do that for every single one that's out of kilter. And that will give you the figure that you need in order to bring it back in. One thing that's worth bearing in mind is that this is added to that figure, not minus. I, the, it, it, sometimes your brain goes a bit fuzzy and you end up taking it away. Just double check um, that um, you're, you are getting the right figure. As a rule of thumb, don't forget, if, you're, if your valves are too tight and what you're trying to do is shim them, uh, space them out again to bring them back in, the, the, the shim or the lifter that you're fitting should be thinner than the one that you've taken out. Uh, as, long as, you've, as long as it's thinner, you've gone the right way. So uh, yeah, that's, um, that's pretty straightforward. So with that in mind, I need to get on to, um, I need to get on the Fowler's parts and order some, uh, order some bits up because obviously I don't keep these on the off chance that I need to, uh, I need to replace them. As you can see here, I've got a big stack of gaskets. Um, all of those gaskets I knew that I was going to need, so I ordered them in advance uh, on the off chance that I didn't actually require any adjustment whatsoever. I was kind of hoping I didn't because that would have saved me money. As I said before, these VTEC valves are 28, 29 quid each, and the shims for the non VTEC valves are approximately eight. £8.50 I think it is so you can see that there's going to be a, a, a fair bit of cost involved in this I'm looking at uh, a shade over £100 just in shims and um, shims and buckets so I'll go and um, I'll go and order them now um, I would imagine that they're going to take a few days to come so it's going to be next weekend we're on we're on um, Saturday now uh, it'll be next Saturday by the time I get these so um, what I'll do, I'll, uh, I'll leave this here for now and then by the power of YouTube and video in a couple of seconds, you'll see me say, here they are. So I'll catch you all very, very soon.